Hi, my name is Dan Greenwood. I am a brand specialist with Alpine Electronics, and today we're going to be doing a quick setup guide and tuning video for the Optimate. Now, this video is going to apply to two different products, the PXE-C80-88, as well as the PXE-C60-60. Now, we call those the Optimate and the Optim 6, respectively. The only difference is between these two products is going to be a couple different things. One, the, P the Optim 8 is an 8-channel, as the Optim 6 is a 6-channel. Pretty straightforward. Now the Optimate is also going to have an amplifier built in. So what it's going to give you is a uh, one, one channels one through six are going to be 50 watts per channel, and channel seven and eight are going to be 150 by uh, by two. Uh, now those two channels can also be run down to two ohm, and you get 300 by two. Now please do keep in mind on channel seven and eight you cannot bridge them. So if you want to run a subwoofer off of them, you're going to either need to run two very efficient two ohm subs and one per channel, or if you have a bigger sub, you're gonna to wanna to run like a dual two ohm sub for one channel per coil, okay? Now, as far as the Optum 6 goes, like I said before, there is no amplifier in it, so it's just gonna have pre-outs only, so you're gonna to wanna to use external amplifiers with that one. But both products do come with the Bluetooth dongle, the uh, uh, controller, everything you need to get it set up. And what's really cool is they also both use the exact same software and same, set, same setup guide, same everything. So today we're going to, we're going to be doing the Optum 8, but everything we're talking about today will apply to the Optum 6 as well. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get the software. Now, where do you find that software? It's real simple. Go to alpine-usa.com and then uh, you're going to want to look, scroll over to products, look down and you're going to see sound processors. And then on the right side, you'll see a C80, uh, the C80 right here, which is the Optum 8. Click that. It'll take you to the site, scroll down, and then you'll see a link right here for the PC app. So just click that, it'll open up a new window, and then you're gonna to wanna to download the setup guide, and there's also a PDF that has a little bit of uh, instruction on how what you need to do there, okay? As far as the app goes, you wanna get your iPhone out. Now this will, is iPhone only, um, because we actually know what microphones are in the iPhone, they're all standardized, that's, that's the reason why we stuck with iPhone only. But what you wanna do is just go to the App Store, search PXE and you're going to see the second search down on my screen is going to see PXE dash C80 underscore C60 just select that and then oh, um, just uh, I already have the app installed on my phone but then just just download it and then you'll have the app ready to go all right now that we have the program on our P Windows PC we're just going to open it up and I already have an Optimate over here powered up uh, and connected to the USB port on the computer so you'll see that it's already data, doing the data processing and it's already synced up to the computer. Another way you're gonna know that you are connected is in the top left corner here, you'll have a green power icon. Green means that you are connected. If it's red, that means you're gonna be in offline mode and you're not connected to the DSP. So just kind of getting a quick overview and quick look at the software. This is gonna be what we call the home screen. And right away on the top, you'll have a master volume. And then over here on the top right, it'll be different screens uh, for different um, features of the DSP. We're going to go into each one of those. Uh, first things first, you're going to want to determine what your main source is. So over here on main source selection, this is where you're telling the DSP, are you using a high level end like a factory uh, audio system or aux, which is actually a low level, the RCA input. You can even use Bluetooth or USB audio or the digital coax input. You can actually set one of those as your main source as well. Over here on mix source, this is actually a really cool feature. This is actually a secondary source that you can have selected. And whenever it receives any kind of signal on that source, it will automatically switch to it. And then the uh, attenuation slider here, that's actually how much it will mute the main channel. So um, if you have, for example, Bluetooth set, um, it'll actually attenuate uh, up to, you actually attenuate 100% of, of the factory, uh, the main source. So pretty cool idea there. One thing you can do is you can actually have like your high level is your factory audio, but if you want to stream from your phone every once in a while to get uh, a little better quality, you can have Bluetooth set as your mix source. And once you start streaming, the controller will become your volume knob and then you're just, you don't have to change any sources or anything. It works really well. So I'm going to leave that on off for right now. Uh, down here, this is what we'll do. We'll set up the input, set up the outputs. Uh, this is also set up the high level input uh, anti-EQ. We'll go into that as well, as well as the auto EQ. That'll be towards the end of the video. Uh, looking at the EQ screen. So right now we are actually on the, on the uh, 
default settings, this is how the Optimate comes out of the box. So you'll see that all channels one through six are already set to full range and channel seven and eight are set to subwoofer. Um, we can work, this is probably not gonna match the system that you're doing. So we're gonna go over how to set that up and make it match what you are, uh, the system that you are installing. Time correction screen, we'll get back into this a little later, but this is where you can set your delay uh, for each channel. And your mixer is how you're going to identify what signal from the input is going to what output. Now, uh, this can be a little daunting, a little complicated to some people. That's okay. Um, what we're going to go over and how to set up their inputs and your outputs is actually going to automatically set this up for you. And it works really well. So we're going to go back to the home screen. And the first things first is we're going to, uh, I know we're going to set input mode selection. Now, before you do this, and let's, we're going to assume that the system has already been installed. You're going to want to know, exactly what you have hooked up and where. So let's say for example, you're doing this on a factory uh, sound system. It's non-amplified, it's real simple. It just has front, fronts and rears, full range speakers. You can see right here uh, on the uh, input mode, that there's a four channel input and it's actually set up exactly like that system. Now do keep in mind that uh, it's not numbered here, but um, the numbered inputs on the DSP are one through, uh, one through eight you're actually gonna match them here. So like the front, the top left will be one, and then uh, top right will be uh, two and so on. It actually, and it just continues down. That's how all these are gonna be. Um, so we'll, let's say just hypothetically that's your system. So we'll select that. Now down here, it's also gonna want you to select an auxiliary channel. Um, you can, you can select any one of these or just leave it on customized. It doesn't matter if you're not using aux, that's okay. If you are using low level with a factory, or I'm sorry, with an aftermarket radio or some kind of light, um, some kind of integration device, then you would use that and you can actually just leave the high level on custom. But we're gonna hit next. It's gonna say, hey, since you left auxiliary on custom, how many channels do you wanna use? We'll just leave it on six, we'll just leave them open. Um, it's okay. All right, so now we're gonna go and tell it what system that we're installing. What, what is our configuration? So we're gonna to go to output mode selection, and you're also gonna see some similar diagrams to just what we saw in the input mode. Now you can look through here and see if any of these match the system that you've done. Uh, a very popular, very common one is over here in this eight channel, which is a two-way active front stage. So you got front highs, front lows, rear full range, as well as uh, subwoofer uh, left and right, or two sub outputs. So let's say this is the system we did. Now please do keep in mind that channels one and two are up here, channels three and four are here, five, six, and seven and eight. That's how these are identified in here and how they're gonna be wired on the DSP. So let's select that. And now it has actually gone through and configured everything. So let's take a look through and see what all it did. So let's jump over to the EQ screen and you will see that it has actually now identified the front, left, uh, tweeters, woofers, the rear full range, as well as subwoofer. And it's actually gone and set up a basic crossover just to get you going. So you can go through here on each channel and, and adjust the crossover to whatever setting you want and whatever free, whatever crossover point works for whatever speaker you're doing. Um, and then you're good to go. Time correction screen, um, You like I said before, this is when you would input your delay for your uh, speaker. So, uh, do, please do keep in mind that you cannot just put in the measurement of, you can't just put a gravitate measure, go from your driver's seat and go to your speaker and put that measurement in because it actually does not do the calculation for you of the difference between the furthest speaker away from the closest speaker. So a little trick I like to use and it might help you guys out and make it real simple. There's a website. It's called traceright.com. Here's a link down here. This is how it's spelled. Uh, we'll put a link down in the description for you as well. And what you can do there is actually input your measurements and hit calculate and it'll give you all your all your uh, delay measurements in milliseconds. Then just come in here and type them in and then you're set. It's real simple and it works really great. Okay, now going over to the mixer tab. This is when you'll see it looks a little different than it did before. You'll see the auxes are not set up because we actually are not using those. We're using high level input. So you can see that we're also only using four of the high level inputs. So it, it actually grayed out the rest of them. So we have uh, on the left side, these are all your inputs and across the bottom are all your outputs. So 
the easiest way to describe this and to understand this is um, what you find your input and how much of that signal percentage wise do you want to go to the output across the bottom so for example channels one channel one on the input is high is full range front left that's what channel one on the output will be it'll be a, a front left speaker so we want 100 percent of that signal that's a tweeter and channel three is a woofer so we also want the same signal going out to that okay and so on and you'll also see that uh, channel seven and eight are actually not populated from the rear. So they're actually uh, taking a signal from the fronts and monoing them. That's actually pretty common. A lot of vehicles do have more, uh, more of a, a lower signal in the front, um, lower range signal in the front. So just be no, no, note that. And if it's a vehicle where you actually have small speakers in the front and maybe six by nines in the back, maybe you want to switch that to the rears. It's just going to depend on the vehicle that you're doing. Okay. So that's it. Now the next uh, step you can do since we're using high level input in this scenario is you can actually take a look at the anti EQ. What this screen does is it actually uh, tells you, uh, allows you to do any uh, like a de equalization of the factory source. So if it's a little, you're having a little bit of a problem at like, for example, 500 Hertz and you need to bring it down on channel one, you can actually do that here. And it is a parametric EQ. So you can adjust the Q to pretty wide to extremely narrow so uh, so you can do this and adjust it and while you're doing this you can actually be playing pink noise through your factory source and down here at the bottom of the screen is an RTA so you can actually see the signal on that channel while you're adjusting EQ so if you need to do any kind of equalization or anything this is where you would do that okay so let's say that you did a system that is not in one of these predetermined configurations that's okay we can actually set this up customized as well so I've already uh, reset the DSP back to its default settings. So once again, you would select what your input level, uh, your input uh, source will be um, and so on. So let's go ahead and jump right into input mode. And you scroll through all of these and none of these match the system that you did, right? So let's just leave it on customized. And this is when it'll ask you, hey, how many channels of high level and low level are you gonna be using? We'll just leave them all open. So we're gonna hit enter. And then we're going to continue on to set up the input. So the where you would do that on high level input is you go back into the anti EQ screen and you're going to see that all the channels are now up set. They're all uh, nullified. So they'll say null. This is when you would tell it what channel you gave it. So let's say, for example, you did a vehicle that is an active three way front and it has a subwoofer like a one mono channel sub. Let's uh, so we'll do channels one. Channel one will be the front left tweeter. T will be the front right tweeter and you can and you just click and select what it is and then we'll have mids on channels three and four woofer on five and six and then uh, we'll just say channel seven was a subwoofer okay all right so we set those up hit save close the screen Okay, now we're going to set up our outputs. So we we'll go to output mode, and once again, we're going to leave this on custom. Hit next, and we're going to just leave all eight channels open. So we're going to hit enter. And now across the bottom here, you're going to see that this all kind of got grayed out and nullified. Now there's two ways you can set up your output channels. You can do it right here on the home screen, and you can just select what channel you're doing and, and um, select what it is. I actually like to do it on the EQ screen because they're all just right here and real easy to get to. So let's say the champ, the system that we're doing is uh, real simple. Just even though we have this in a configurator, but it's a two-way front, full range rear and sub. Okay. So let's we're going to do front left tweeter on channel one, front right tweeter on channel two. Channel three will be uh, woofer. Four will be front right woofer. Five will be full range. Six will be full range for rear. And then we'll do uh, subwoofer left and right on channel seven and eight. Okay. Now you can go through each one of these channels and it, you'll see as you apply this, uh, and it also does put on a basic crossover for you. You can go through and for example, you want a high pass on your woofer. You can say, hey, I want, and you can actually punch the number in. I want an 80 Hertz at 24 dB Link with Riley uh, high pass on my woofers. Yeah, so you can select that in there and then you can say, okay, I, yeah, we'll change this to 24 on the, on the uh, low pass. 
and you're set. If you want to do this between left and right together, that's actually what the sync button does. And you can copy from left to right or right to left. It just depends on what you want to do. So I'm going to hit OK. And you'll see now when I look at both woofers are the same. And you can continue that on for the rest of your channels. So now we've set up the inputs and the outputs. Let's go take a look at the mixer and see what that did. So as you can see, it actually already kind of populated what we need. So we can see that it said that the front channel one was our front right tweeter. It, it let that signal go right out to our, our, uh, our other tweeters. Now, something you might want to do here, since we actually had uh, a full range, uh, uh, we didn't have full range, we had three-way speakers in here. Depending on the crossover points and the frequency range in the factory, you might actually find yourself wanting to do uh, to mix in like channels three and five together on the uh, on the woofer output, so that way you get all the frequency range that you um, that you're expecting. That's where that's what's called summing. That's this is how you would do that. Okay, so, but what it's going to do by default is get you pretty close. Now, like I said, this is a kind of a weird scenario, but um, but you can also see here on the rear channel since we actually didn't give this any rear channels. Uh, from the factory system because we just summed the whole front and the sub to get full range signal. You'll see that it actually did 100% of the tweeter, the mid, and the woofer. Mix all three of those together to give you full range output on channel 5. So now we're all set up. You would At this point, you would go, like I said, you go through, you set up your crossovers. Uh, you can adjust your levels right here accordingly. Um, At um, this point, I would also give everything a, a listen to make sure everything's playing like it should. Make sure every speaker's playing the frequencies as it should. Um, play with the balance fader on the radio, make sure everything's going where it should. Um, really good, uh, really good suggestion here is if you have a phase checker, go around and check phase on all your speakers. That is very important. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is, uh, this is optional, but then you would set your delay. And then now you're going to want to save. So uh, we have all of our settings here. We have everything all set up. Uh, down here in the bottom right corner of the EQ screen, this is where we can save our presets, uh, which is uh, saving everything to the internal memory of the DSP. Now by default, the call button is gonna be highlighted. So if I were to click preset one right now, it's gonna, it's gonna override everything I did and just load the default value for preset because call means load. Ask me how I know. So we wanna make sure you click save first. And then now we're going to select preset one. And at this point, you can uh, label the preset what you want. I'm just going to leave it as preset one right now and click OK. Now, as you might have noticed right there, it said data processing and it popped up very quick and then it went away. That means that it actually did not sync. Uh, something uh, very interesting that I've noticed on this, and it doesn't matter if you have a USB extension or not. Right now, I actually don't have one. That actually means it did not sync and save every, all the settings to the DSP. So what you're going to want to do is click preset one again and hit OK. And now it's synced because you uh, notice that the ring animated. You want to see that ring animate. If it doesn't animate, just do it again. Oh, cool. So now uh, we got everything saved. We know everything's playing. We know everything's good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run out to the vehicle that has one of these installed. And we're going to do the auto EQ setting and uh, check out how the auto EQ works. Okay, we're out here in the vehicle with an Optimate installed and we're about to tune this thing. Now there's two ways we can do this. One is with the iPhone app that we talked about before. Now for those of you that don't have an iPhone, that's okay. We also do have the KTX CSP-1. And what this is, is actually a microphone that is, uh, we'll just plug in with an extension cable right into the processor. There's actually a port on there called mic and you would just plug it into that. And then all the steps that we're about to do on the phone can just be done on the PC software, and it is the exact same process. So we're just going to show you on the phone, but do note that all the screen capture, all everything you're seeing on the on the uh, app is identical on the PC software. Okay. So first things first is we're going to have the vehicle inside of a nice, fairly quiet space. I understand that maybe you can't do that, but just try if uh, if someone if you have music on in the bay or a compressor kicks on, just kind of turn it off just for a couple minutes. That way you do this, it just makes the process go a lot smoother. Um, we're going to have all the windows up in the vehicle. We're not going to have the engine running. We're not going to have the AC running. We're going to try to have it as quiet as possible in here, okay? Okay, before we get measuring, please do keep in mind if you're using an iPhone that you are going to want to disconnect CarPlay or Bluetooth to the head unit in your car. 
And the reason why is because there's a really good chance while you're doing all these measurements, instead of using the internal mic on the phone, it's gonna be using your Bluetooth mic in the car, which will not give you an accurate measurement. So first things first, you wanna get disconnected, or if you're using a different phone that's not connect, connected to that head unit, you're gonna, you'll be okay. But uh, you do not want CarPlay or Bluetooth connected to the car while you do this. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get our phone paired up to the DSP's Bluetooth. Uh, so as you can see here, I'm in my Bluetooth and there's a DSP HD-40459B. Now yours will always start with DS DSP HD and then it's gonna have different numbers after that. That's part of the serial number, that's okay but that's what we wanna to connect to. So we're just gonna tap that. There is no passcode or anything to connect to it. So we are now connected. So now we can go over to our PXE uh, C60 C80 app, and uh, we're gonna go ahead, and I'm just gonna hit scan again, but this is what you should see the first time you launch it. You'll see right here that there's a the same model number DSP that we found before with the Bluetooth little blue icon to the uh, right. So we're gonna go ahead and tap that. And now we're ready to go. So uh, if this is the first time you've ever paired to a uh, to a, a, this, uh, this is the first time we're pairing to this Optimate. So this is the screen we're gonna see. It's actually gonna guide us right through the process of what we need to do. So the first things first is we're actually gonna get our levels set. Now do keep in mind all of the tones that are being generated. It's actually a sign sweep. These are all being generated from inside the DSP. So whatever uh, source you're using, like in this case, we're using an F511. It's actually not gonna be used. So we need to get the level set and this is actually gonna generate a sound as soon as I hit start. And then we're gonna move a slider to get, and we're gonna aim for the middle of the range. And uh, you're gonna see that what I'm talking about here as soon as I hit start, okay? And you'll probably hear the sound as well. So what you wanna do is move the slider right into the middle of the two red lines and uh, it'll, once it's happy, it'll actually stop itself and, uh, and then we're just gonna hit proceed. Okay, great, now, so now we're on the next screen which just uh, shows that we're about to measure the frequency response of the vehicle. So it's uh, giving a little side, little animation here saying, hey, you're about to move your phone around the vehicle and we're gonna capture about two minutes worth of sign sweeps. And actually during that process, the processor is calculating and measuring about 200 times and finding an average of the frequency response of the vehicle. So this is gonna give you a kind of a notice, like a five second notice before it starts uh, doing this. So uh, we're actually gonna be moving the mic uh, for the whole phone around because we are using the internal mics on the phone itself. Now, please do keep in mind that if you have some kind of big case on your phone or maybe your mics are dirty, uh, you might wanna get those, you might wanna clean them out first uh, because that can highly affect the uh, results that you get, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and hit measure. We're gonna have a five second countdown. And then we just start moving around. Now I went ahead and canceled this just to show you something. Now you'll see on the left side of the screen here that it is, uh, the base is kind of high. Now in some cases, and this is, in this case we're okay because it's actually all visible and on the scale. Now, if you actually have a lot of bass in your car and you notice that the left side of the line is off the screen, here's a picture on screen of what that might look like. There's a real easy fix for this because if you don't do anything about this, so it'll actually try to EQ all that bass out, which we don't want to lose. So if you are seeing that, what you're going to want to do is hit cancel and then you're going to go into the controller of, uh, that is included. Now, if you don't have the controller hooked up, um, you can do this in the software or you can, uh, if you have a bass knob, you can use that. Do keep in mind the radio's uh, sub-level will not affect this at all. Uh, but we're gonna hold the knob for three seconds. And then we're gonna see subwoofer. And then we just wanna turn that down a few steps. And then uh, what that's gonna do is lower the sub-level. And then we're gonna do another measurement to see if we're in the scale, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and hit remeasure and it's gonna have us set the levels again. Do keep in mind when you're doing this, you don't want to have your hand over the microphones on the phone. They're on this side, on the bottom. Okay, we're gonna, so we got the measurements done again, so we're gonna hit proceed. 
and then we're about to do our measurements in the car. So we're gonna start on the driver's side and we're gonna kind of cover as much of the area. Around, you know, I go from my, from about uh, level of the bottom of the window up to uh, above your head, over and way in front of you, all around your head, and then you're just gonna kind of go in slices all the way to the other passenger side of the vehicle. And if you come, if you get over there and you still have time left, then it's okay to start working your way back until the uh, measurement's complete, okay? All right, perfect. So we can see that our measurement is now done. And the solid uh, line that you're seeing is actually the average of all the measurements. And the uh, uh, more of the ghost lines in the background are all the real time measurements that, uh, that were picked up. So if you are happy with everything, then you hit accept. If you want to do another measurement, because maybe the compressor did kick on, or maybe it's another car in the bay has a lot of bass going and you've picked that up, you might want to do a remeasure. You can do that right here. But we're good. We're happy with what our results. So we're going to hit accept. And now the next screen is really cool. Uh, what the, now what it'll do is it'll, you'll have your master level of your DSP volume right here. So you can actually get music playing again and you'll hear it play in the background and you have control of your volume right here. And then you're gonna see uh, the, the measurements uh, that were done in the vehicle. You'll actually uh, see everything done and the EQ being applied and what kind of EQ you want to apply. So we're gonna take a look at each uh, one by one uh, so we can actually, so we can see here that the green line is actually the measurement that was done in the vehicle. We could see it actually a lot of the mid range was gone. Now, honestly, that's probably because I actually do have a window open so I can film this, but that that's and your results are going to be different. Um, now you can also look at this and say, well, you know what? I might want to turn my tweeters down, um, and then do a remeasure because, uh, you can see they're, they're pretty high up on the scale here. Uh, and you're, like I said, it, it's going to be different every time. So uh, we're going to put in, uh, this is what our target will be. So this is the default line, but you can also adjust this and make it anything you want. So uh, I'm going to actually mess with that right now. I actually like to have a little bit more mid bass and a little bit more sub bass. So I can do something like this. And I'm going to bring a little bit of the mid range out and a little bit and just have it kind of just taper off. Maybe, maybe something a little more like that. Cool. And then uh, we can actually see what the e what EQ is being applied. So you can see it actually applies a perfect inverse of the measurement. Uh, also taking into consideration what kind of EQ curve that you want on here. And then in the background, it's hard to see it, but that's actually the predicted EQ, um, which will, which uh, what it will predict the final response of the vehicle will be. And then the pink line, which we actually can't see, it's on the bottom of our scale, which is a good thing, that's your noise. So that's anything that the microphone picked up that should not have been there during the sign sweeps. If you have, if your pink line is way up in here and way up in the scale of everything, then you might want to uh, no notate that something came on, some kind of noise was going on in your in your environment that really caused that a problem. So uh, you might want to do a remeasure then, okay? So. If we're do uh, while we're in the screen, there's a really cool feature we can do. One, first things first, we're gonna store it. And when you do store, that will actually save all of this into the DSP's internal memory. And while you're listening, you can actually toggle the bypass EQ uh, switch. Now, when it is on to, to the right position, that is actually bypassing the CQ. So this is not, now you're listening to the system before all this is, all, all the EQ has been done. And then switch to the left means you're actually use, utilizing the EQ. So you can actually hear a before and an after. And it's also a really great way to demo. And you can uh, use this while you're doing your tweaking, listening to music that you do know very well uh, to make sure that it sounds like you want. And if you're noticing little changes you want to make, you can change them on the fly and hear it. Now, we're not doing this in this video because of copyright protection with music, but uh, this is how you would do it here. So. When you're done, you want to make sure that the EQ switches in the left position because that is how you're going to be able to turn on and off the EQ. And uh, just so you know, you can also reset back to default if you want to start your uh, 
reference if your curve over again that's what the reset the default button is and then the eq gain offset is actually applying how much of the eq gain plus or minus that you want to apply so like you can see i move it down less eq or more of the eq so uh that's gonna your mileage will vary there uh it's, it depends on what you want to do i have honestly always found myself leaving it at zero but like i said you might play around with that to see if it makes any improvement for you so we're all said and done we're all happy with our results we're going to hit store and we're done now please do keep in mind that this eq is not part of any of your presets this is like a global eq you will actually not see it in, in inside of any of your presets the way that you see the eq is right here in the app um so uh you if you go in and go to your back to your pc software look at preset one look at your eq screen it's actually going to look like nothing has been done that's because that's a whole nother eq uh this is actually what is utilizing the var filter inside of our optim 8 and uh so this is our like we'll call it like a global eq um now do keep in mind if you do this on the phone but then you go back to another phone or the pc software you can't resume where you were. You'll have to do another remeasure and then do it again because it is saved by device. So please do keep that in mind as well. And that's it guys. Uh, so if you guys have any questions or anything, just uh, let us know. And uh, thanks for taking the time of watching this. Have a great day.